Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the flag for Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions, known throughout the land. Now the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. I don't know just how you go about lining up the scrap paper in your neighborhood, but here's a method that seems to work very well for Alton Spears of Springfield, Ohio. Alton is only six years old, yet in the last two paper drives, he collected more than two tons of waste paper. Here's how he does it. Before each paper drive, Alton, who has a big brother in the Army and his eight-year-old sister, ring doorbells in their neighborhood. Here's what they say. Please, lady, I am a soldier's helper. Would you have some paper ready for us on our collection day? And then when Alton collects the paper, he always says, thank you. Be sure to save paper for me. Now, there's a system that you might want to try. It seems to get plenty of results. And remember, that story of Alton's about being a soldier's helper is mighty true. Without that precious paper that you round up and turn in, this war could not be won. It's that scrap paper of yours that helps get vital equipment to our soldiers, equipment they need to get this war won fast. So how about doubling your paper salvage efforts during these last few weeks of vacation? Work up a regular paper salvage route in your neighborhood, and remember, every little scrap of paper you can find is needed badly. The black vulture hovers over our nation, casting a shadow of crime on our war effort. The black vulture, symbol of dishonesty, of selfishness, of greed... Jack Armstrong, Uncle Jim, Betty, and Billy are arriving in Chicago aboard that train. Our friends have been assigned to track down the notorious Black Vulture, leader of a black market ring that has its headquarters in the Windy City. The newspapers of Chicago have carried screaming headlines of the nefarious traffic of the black marketeers, and an aroused public is demanding that something be done in a hurry. Uncle Jim is carrying over one million counterfeit red coupons provided by the G-Men for a plan he has to make contact with the Vulture. Let's join our friends now as they prepare to leave the train. Everything looks perfectly normal, but things are going to happen. Where do you think a robbery will take place, Uncle Jim? I don't know, Betty. Now, Jack, remember, it's your job to keep your eye on that briefcase. In spite of what happens, follow the man with the briefcase. I understand perfectly, Uncle Jim. Billy, you keep your eye on Jack. Go wherever he goes. All right, Uncle Jim. We'll keep our eyes on that briefcase as though it were a football. That's exactly right. Once they grab it, it'll probably pass from one hand to another. Just make sure you don't lose sight of it. Now, Betty, when Jack and Billy start to fight with me, I want you to leave by the nearest exit. Get in the taxi cab and go to the hotel. Oh, Uncle Jim, I'll be so afraid for all of you. There's no reason to be, Betty. We'll keep in touch with you by telephone. This is too dangerous for you to get mixed into. You have an important part to play by relaying our messages to the FBI. So remember, we're depending on you. I won't forget, Uncle Jim. I promise I won't leave that telephone. Fine, Betty. I know we can depend on you. When do you think we ought to start that fight, Uncle Jim? Let's wait until we get into the station. There'll be more people there. A better chance for the gangsters to make a getaway. And remember, that's very important. They have to make a getaway so that we can follow them to their hideout. Oh, gee, Uncle Jim, what if we lose them? It's up to you and Jack to see that you don't lose them. You've both had enough experience in tracing people. Just keep your eyes open. Now, where is that briefcase? Oh, here it is, Uncle Jim. Oh, I hope nothing happens to you. I'll be all right, Patty. With Jack and Billy starting the fight, I don't have to be afraid of being hurt. Of course, if it had been left up to those two thugs, Louie and Heine, it would probably be a different story. Now, you stop worrying your pretty little head. Everything's going to turn out all right. If my plan works, we'll find the black vulture. I'm going to get off the train. You two boys follow me, and when we get in the station, Betty, you do as I told you. All right, Uncle Jim. Well, here goes. Call you later, Betty. Oh, be careful, Uncle Jim. Wait a minute, Billy. Don't get off yet. Let him get a head start on us. Okay, let's go. Come on, Betty. Yeah. Gee whiz, it's going to seem funny starting a fight with Uncle Jim. I don't like the idea of sucking him. Neither do I, Billy. That's the only way we can let the Chicago gangsters know he's the one carrying the red stamps. If you remember, Louie told me that. Doggone it, I think I'm getting cold feet. This is going to be plenty risky. You just watch out what you do, Billy Fairfield. Follow Uncle Jim's instructions to the letter of everyone. 
Somewhere in that crowded station lurks five or six men who work for a man known only as the Silencer. The Silencer is a rival of the notorious Black Vulture. He's paid the Vulture $25,000 for information regarding Uncle Jim's arrival in Chicago. He plans to hijack Uncle Jim, believing that the briefcase contains over one million genuine coupons. Of course, we know that the G-men have switched briefcases, and the coupons Uncle Jim is carrying are counterfeits. Quiet. Let's edge over here through the crowd. Here's the silencer and his strong arm man, Heat. Keep your eyes on gate number three. Hey, what's the guy look like? I don't know what he looks like. Just keep watching that gate. Two of the Vulture's men are supposed to start a fight with him, and he'll be carrying a tan briefcase. As soon as the fight starts, you grab that briefcase and pass it on to Harry at the newsstand outside. And then get in that taxi cab and beat it. And above all, stay away from the joint. I don't want the cops trailing you out to the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've gone all over that before. I know what to do. Okay, get ready to do it. Here come the people from that train. Things are going to be popping any second now. Have your gun ready just in case. I got it ready, boss. Come on. We better get nearer to the gate. Mm. There's more people over there. Mm. Stand less chance of being seen in the crowd. Hey, hey, boss. There goes a guy with a tan briefcase. Yeah, I see him. Keep your eyes on him for a few seconds. Yeah. If anyone starts a fight with him, grab the briefcase and run. Uh uh-uh. uh. He's meeting a couple of women. That can't be the guy. Uh, I guess not. Watch that gate. What's his name? Said he was a pretty big guy. Hey, uh, do you think the two boys from Detroit can handle him once the fight starts? I don't know, but I hope they can't. It'll make it an easier job for the cops. We've got to get rid of those two mugs from Detroit. Yeah, I know. Ah, there they are on the other side of the aisle. They're all ready. Yeah. <laughs> There's an awful mob aboard that train. Boy, where do they put them all? Hey, boss, look. Yeah. There comes a big guy with a briefcase. Yeah, but that's a black one. What's his name? Said it would be a tan one. Keep watching. Hey, I think that's our guy. Listen, mister, quit shouting. What are you talking about? Oh, I didn't shout you. What do you mean you wouldn't shout? I'll leave it up to my friend here. That's him, all right. Doctor, now watch it. Man, watch it, Pete. Right uh, just a second, young man. Don't start getting rough. But what do you do about it if we do? Let him have a kid. Show, will you, Bill? Don't kill me. I thought we were supposed to. We weren't supposed to do anything. Let's just make believe we're loping around the newsstand here. Okay, Jack, but I saw that guy. So did I. Now drop it, will you? Hey, kids, you better sit down on the curb. This must be the guy you socked. Look at any man. I tell you, I didn't do a thing. Just as I was coming through the gate, those two kids jumped on me. Come on, Billy. Let's sit down on the curb. Come on. Put your hand over your eyes, Jack. Maybe you won't recognize Hurry up, kids. Hurry up. I don't expect the cops to ever find that briefcase. 
You say it was pretty valuable, huh? Yes, there were things in that briefcase I couldn't replace here in Chicago. That's too bad, mister. Well, if you do like I said, go over to the police station, report your loss. They may be able to pick up those two hoodlums. Well, thanks for your advice. That's a fine thing. You get into town and immediately somebody takes advantage of you. I wish I could see those two kids. I'd have given them the worst beating they ever got. If some guy hadn't yelled to stop the fight, I'd have taken care of them all right. Yeah, you were holding your own, mister. Well, uh, look, sorry I got to leave you now. Well, thanks for giving me your name and address. You will appear as a witness if the police catch those guys, won't you? Yeah, I'll be glad to. Uh, what did you say your name was? Oh, that's right. I didn't say. My name's Fairfield. Jim Fairfield. Just got in from the coast. Well, Mr. Fairfield, if you need a witness, uh, call me up. Uh, you have my card. Thanks a lot. Wish I could lay my hands on those two kids. The cops pick them up, you'll be able to put them where they belong. Sorry, I got to leave you now. Hey, Dad, you got a paper? Yeah, I got a paper. You want the kind you always buy? Yeah, Dad. There's a nickel. Keep the chain. Thanks. Hey, what went on inside the station, boss? I don't know much about it. Four guys jumped on this gentleman here and took his briefcase away from him. See you tomorrow night, Dad. I uh, hope you get your briefcase back, Mr. Fairfield. I uh, wish I could stay around long enough to find out if you did. I'll let you know if I do. Thanks. Hey. Did you see a couple of kids come out that door and run down the street? What kind of kids? Oh, they were just about that high. Both of them pretty husky. Doggone it, I don't know what they looked like. Everything happened so fast, I could never describe them. They tore your coat, huh? Where? Oh, yeah. Sleeves half out. Is there any place I can get that fixed at this hour of the night? You might stop into the hotel across the street there. The clean and impressing guy might have a needle and thread. Well, thank you. Better get back inside the station and see whether those cops caught anybody. If I don't get that briefcase back, I'm out plenty. Keep your eye open for those two kids, will you? Yeah, I'll keep watching for them. <laughs> A favor? Get your favor here. Read all about it. Read all about it here. Yeah, that guy was plenty sore, wasn't he? You kids better scram before he comes out here again. I thought he was going to see you. Well, I laughed the way he said he couldn't even describe us if he did see us. I think we're safe. Jack, don't you think we better duck? We're playing our luck too far. Yeah, come on. Let's go in that coffee shop and get something to eat. Look, Dad, we'll be sitting right inside there looking out here. That guy comes back. Give us the high sign, will you? You've got a lot of nerve staying around here. Yeah, you got to have nerve to do what we do. Hey, wait for me, Jack. See you later, Dad. Watch your step. Paper, paper here. Read all about it. Get your body, paper here. Come on, Billy. Let's get inside. But, Jack, the guy that grabbed the briefcase got in the taxi cab and drove away. I know he did, Billy. But he handed the briefcase to that old fellow at the newsstand. He put it under a pile of papers. He did? Well, I thought... You forgot to keep your eye on the football, didn't you? Uncle Jim told us to watch that briefcase. Don't you remember? He thought it would be passed to somebody else. Go on, get inside. We've got to watch that newspaper man every second. He'll probably keep the briefcase hidden under those papers until somebody else comes along to make the pickup. Get over in that booth near the window so we can watch the newsstand. Yeah, okay, Jack. Oh, I would have sworn that the guy who grabbed it carried it into the cab with him. Keep your voice down, Billy. Go ahead, slide in that booth. Let me have your hat. There we are. I'll sit over here where I can look right at him. I'm glad you're watching him. I can hardly see out of this left eye of mine. Boy, what a wallop, Uncle Jim Pax. <laughs> I saw him land that one. You walked right into it, Billy. Yeah, I know I did, but I flew out of it. Gee, I'd hate to have him hit me if he was mad. Say, I wonder whether Betty got away or not. She just seemed to disappear all of a sudden. Yes, I lost track of her, so the fight started. Oh, oh, there's Uncle Jim and a couple of policemen. They're going over to the newsstand. The old guy is pointing down the street. That shows he's a crook of some kind or he'd help those policemen. He'd tell them where we were. Boy, these gangs are well organized, aren't they? Yeah. Well, apparently the police are going to take over because Uncle Jim is getting in a cab. Gee, I hate to see him leave us. We have to carry the ball from here on, Billy. And it's going to be plenty dangerous, believe you me. It's going to be plenty dangerous, believe you me. That coming from Jack Armstrong means an awful lot. You want to know what happens when the old newsman takes that briefcase to the silencer's headquarters. So be sure, all of you, to listen in tomorrow to the next exciting episode of Jack Armstrong and the Black Vulture. Wave the flag for Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions, known throughout the land. This is Norman Kraft saying goodbye for today and inviting you to be with us tomorrow for another exciting adventure with Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. <laughs> 